Today I'm speaking with Mr. John Pluger, who is President and Chief Operating Officer at Ellis Corporation. Thank you so much for sitting with me. You're very welcome. A um, couple of quick questions. The VLA market is proving to be quite tough. How do you see this market evolving? Well, look, I think, uh, I think there will always be a role for very large aircraft. The 380 in particular obviously being designed to go from major hub to major hub. The question is how many airlines have enough passenger generating capability to fill up that airplane routinely enough and are the number of those airlines, um, is it enough airlines basically to sustain the production, sustain the growth? From a leasing company perspective, um, one of the most important characteristics in looking at any aircraft is what is its customer base. If you have a smaller customer base, it's less appealing. If you have a large customer base, it is very appealing. So um, from a leasing company perspective, uh, at least from our perspective, um, the customer base for the A380, while very, a very strong list of customers, an A1 list of customers, uh, uh, absolutely, um, there's just not enough of them um, from our perspective. Right. So um, the other aspect is that on an aircraft such as the A380 that would cost an awful lot of money to reconfigure, uh, to go to the next airline specification, the real question becomes for a lessor, okay, what about the second lease of the aircraft, the release? So you put it on with some, uh, a lease with an airline for the first 10 or 12 years, but after that 10 or 12 years, who's going to take it? And that's another part that we can't quite answer to our satisfaction. So the bottom line is, I think the airplane itself is serving the mission. The airlines who operate the airplane report that it's doing well. Passengers like it. It's a big, it's a big comfortable airplane. Uh, the loading and unloading times has not turned out to be that big of a deal. So I think it is serving the mission, but I think it is a limited mission. Is the same thing would apply then to the 747-8? Yes. I mean, look, I think the market speaks for itself. Um, you know, the number of people that have enjoyed, uh, that have ordered the 747-8, the passenger version, the freighter's a little bit better, but the passenger version is a very small uh, customer base um, now uh, as the last derivative of the airplane. I think, you know, as four engine airplanes go, it's a, it's a great airplane, it's a, the newest uh, generation, but I don't think you're going to find widespread uh, acknowledgement, acceptance of any four engine aircraft, no matter how good it is. The economics of a big twin are just are just far too compelling. So, uh, moving right along to the big twin, then yeah. there's this, there seems to be a lot of push to Airbus to go to get to, to bring out a mm -hmm. 330 Neo. Mm -hmm. What's your sense of that? Well, I think at the end of the day, it will depend upon what the A330 Neo gives us. Um, if it is the same order of magnitude uh, in fuel burn improvement, 12 to 14 percent, for example, I think it's a serious aircraft that would need to be looked at. Um, and I think certainly the trade-off in most of our view is would that airplane take the place of, uh, for example, the A350-800? There's been a lot of talk about whether or not Airbus is going to produce the A350-800. They're contractually obligated with several customers to produce it, but nonetheless the market has spoken and it's really the Dash 900 and the Dash 1000 that are the real market makers for the A350. Um, so I think we and others uh, would take a keen interest in looking at the A330neo. Um, obviously, it adds some life to the A330 program, which, by the way, is doing very well on its own. We, we actually are quite bullish on, on the current generation A330. But the NEO, again, would, um, would add life overall to that program. And um, really, it comes down to what does the airplane offer in terms of increased efficiency versus what is the capital cost as opposed to a 787, for example, dash 8 or 9, uh, certainly the A350-800. Uh, not everybody needs the range of the A350-800, and in fact, um, most people do not need to go 8,000 plus nautical miles. So the A330neo, uh, given a significant fuel burn advantage and improvement, uh, is another compelling airplane to look at. Last uh, segment I want to speak mm -hmm. with you about is the, the small segment. Mm -hmm. Bombardier seems to be having a tough time selling the C-Series. Mm -hmm and yet the airplane's numbers look very promising. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your sense of, of that segment and that airplane? Well, it's kind of interesting. I, I agree with you. I think the airplane is a great airplane just in terms of what it's doing and its performance, uh, particularly the, the CS300 series is a, is a compelling airplane. 
Um, but I think it's, you, you look at the history, that the C-Series was actually introduced in concept before the Airbus NEO uh, took over for the single aisle. And I think that when the NEO came out with such uh, a more improved fuel efficiency and therefore seat mile cost, um, I think that that impacted the uh, C-Series somewhat. Um, because originally the C-Series with, uh, with the Pratt 1000 gear turbofan, um, you know, was supposed to promise um, equal or better uh, fuel economics compared to the A320 CEO. But now the NEO, uh, NEO has come out, as has the 737 MAX. So I think the seat mile economics are not quite as compelling. And then you go to the price of the aircraft. Um, you know, the market tends to speak. Um, uh, I think the Bombardier is still working very hard on this program. Um, I think people do note that the program has shifted to the right several times. Um, and that causes people to open their eyes a little bit as to how the development program is going. But, um, you know, the, the C-Series will be introduced at the size 130 and 140 seats in a spot that the marketplace, the biggest competitor is actually not the Ember Air uh, or the G2 Ember Air E195, but the real competitor is um, older 737, 700s, older A319s, which at a pricing point, a much reduced capital cost, um, airlines just simply have to outweigh the benefits um, of having a new aircraft at a much higher capital cost versus a well-proven and still very viable um, smaller gauge current generation aircraft. Um, and I think we just have to watch the marketplace. I would tend to agree with you. Most people think that the C-Series has probably not achieved critical mass. And to the point that I made about the A380, as a lessor, we would like to see more customers for the C-Series. Thank you so much. Okay, you're very welcome.